please be seated. Good afternoon. I'm Dr. Stephen Dubinet, Interim Dean at the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA. As a land-grant institution, the David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA acknowledges the Cabralino Tongva peoples as the traditional land caretakers of Tavangar. On behalf of my colleagues at the David Geffen School of Medicine and the Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science, I welcome everyone. With the greatest of pleasure, we now have our 25th white coat ceremony. I'm especially I'm especially delighted that the families of our students are here to share this significant event with all of us. We were hopeful that we would be able to celebrate this momentous occasion together in person, and we are so grateful to see this hope come to fruition. I would now like to introduce my and colleague Dr. Clarence Braddock, Executive Vice Dean and Vice Dean of Education at the David Geffen School of Medicine, Dr. Braddock. Thank you. Uh, uh, I don't want to cry yet, quite yet. Um, thank you, Dr. Dubinet. Um, and, to, and to guests, it's just so great to be here. I can't tell you. Last year, we weren't able to do this in person, so it just, it's fantastic to see the room filling with our brand new students. And uh, well, they're not quite brand new. They've been here four weeks, just to be clear, uh, and all the families. Um, to the class of 2025, congratulations. Congratulations. The white coat ceremony is an important milestone for students entering medical school. Here in the presence of family, friends, our faculty, these students who are about to become physicians in a short period of time, a little bit of time, but a short period of time, we welcome them into the medical community, into the profession and they are cloaked with their first white coat, marking their entry into this most revered profession. For the students, the ceremony emphasizes professional expectations and responsibilities, reinforcing the primacy of the physician-patient relationship. Importantly, today reminds us that physicians should care as well as cure. For families and friends who are here today with our students, we hope that this ceremony provides a very special and personal connection to, between you and the David Evans School of Medicine. Uh, I know your hearts are filled with pride, uh, and I know the students are deeply grateful that you're here to be with them today. For our faculty, uh, this day provides an important reminder of why we do the work we do. It affords us the opportunity to be introduced to the entire class of 2025, enhancing our awareness of the incredible talents and diversity of this amazing group of students. For our alumni, your involvement provides a much needed link between the beginning of these medical careers of these future physicians as future members of your association and our community. And finally, it's important to remember our patients. For this ceremony reaffirms our commitment to compassion and caring. The David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA is enriched by three specific and unique tracks. The Charles R. Drew UCLA Medical Education Program, the Prime LA, and our Medical Scientist Training Program. So it's now my honor to introduce Dr. Deborah prothero Stith, Dean of the Charles R. Drew University College of Medicine, who will offer a few welcoming greetings to the class of 2025. Thank you. 
Thank you very much, Dr. Braddock and uh, Dean Dubinet. This is just an amazing day. It's so exciting. It is um, my pleasure and my honor on behalf of the trustees of Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science, our president, our provost, our leadership, some of whom are here with us, our faculty, our students, and our community to welcome you. This is for us a very, very important occasion. Our relationship with UCLA and Geffen School of Medicine goes back to before an agreement in 1978, which represented the first five-year agreement creating the medical education program track here within Geffen. And in 2018, we signed our fifth 10-year agreement with UCLA. And this for us, <laughs> represents a partnership helping us fulfill our commitment to under-resourced communities, many of them black and brown communities across this country and especially the Willow Brook area in South Los Angeles on the Watts Compton border, which is where CDU is located. So when I say this is a special relationship, it is. It is a special relationship for us. And this class of 2025 is special to us as well because we know your careers in medicine and in health will help us serve our community. So welcome to you, welcome to your friends and family. Congratulations to the friends and family because you have been the wind beneath the wings. Thank you and just know how excited we are that you are here. Welcome to the class of 2025, the friends and family. Thank you, Dr. Prother. That was a wonderful welcome. Um, now it's my great uh, honor to introduce Dr. Gerardo Moreno, uh, our interim chair of our Dep Department of Family Medicine and executive director of our Prime LA program. Thank you, Dr. Braddock. On behalf of the Prime Program, I also extend a very warm welcome to the class of 2025. Congratulations to each and every one of you, to your families, to your mentors, to your communities and loved ones. A personal congratulations to the Prime Program, to the students in the Prime Program who will graduate from UCLA with a medical doctorate, but also an additional master's degree. This is the 14th year of the PRIME program here at UCLA, and the mission of the program is to educate physicians who are going to be leaders, advocates, in care for underserved communities in California. UCLA is an incredible and amazing community, and for parents and families, don't worry, the faculty and the staff will take very good care of the students. Thank you. Continuing the trend of students who are going to spend a little bit longer uh, here at the David Geffen School of Medicine, um, it's my pleasure now to introduce Dr. David Dawson, co-director of the Medical Scientist Training Program. This is a program where students will earn a, both an MD and a PhD. Dr. Dawson. Thank you, Clarence. Uh, hello, UCLA DGSOM. Congratulations on being here. Um, on behalf of the uh, leadership of the UCLA Caltech Medical Scientist Training Program, welcome and congratulations to the uh, DGSOM class of 2025. Of course, for those of you who are entering the MSDP to additionally earn your PhD as part of your MD, that would be the class of 2025 in a few additional years, maybe, some change. So don't worry, trust me, it goes quickly. And um, uh, it's, it's a real pleasure to be mentoring you. 
uh, you are the 38th class, uh, MSTP class, to matriculate. So uh, you join a program with a long history of training outstanding physician scientists. Uh, the breadth and excellence of research at our institution, our partner institution at Caltech, provides opportunities to pursue a rigorous combined degree training in a wide array of disciplines relevant to improving human health and medicine. And that ranges from basic sciences to translational medicine to engineering uh, to social sciences and public health policy. So we are excited and honored to support and mentor you throughout your training here and look forward to celebrating all of your accomplishments as you pursue your passion for uh, academic scholarship and a lifelong commitment to research and leadership. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you, Dr. Dawson. Uh, I should add a footnote, it's not actually in the script, but for those in, uh, family and friends here, we have four tracks, and I, we're really delighted to have these different ways in which our students can achieve what's sort of our motto, which is for them to become outstanding physicians and, where that and is really a blank in which they're able to channel their passions, their interests of how they want to affect the lives of their future patients and affect the health of their community. So all these students are on that journey and it's very exciting to think about the different ways in which they get to do that. Because the white coat ceremony also symbolizes uh, honoring the values of professionalism, compassion, empathy, and caring, each year we choose this venue to recognize the recipient of the Tao Humanism in Medicine Award. The Leonard Tao Humanism in Medicine Award is presented by the Arnold P. Gold Foundation, a national organization dedicated to ensuring that compassion, respect, and empathy are at, the are at the core of all healthcare interactions. This award recognizes and, and honors a faculty member who is exemplary in their compassion, their sensitivity to the delivery of care to patients and their family members, as well as their res the respect in which they're held by their colleagues. The recipient is nominated and selected by a group of peers. This year's recipient is Dr. Amar Kishan, Associate Professor of Radiology Chief of Genital Urinary Oncology Service and Vice Chair of Clinical and Translational Research. A fantastic clinician who demonstrates the highest level of compassion for his patients and their families every day. Dr. Kishan is known for his dedication to his patients. As a radiation oncologist, he works with patients diagnosed with cancer, and each week, each week he takes on several new patients, helping them navigate the complex web of choices faced by, their, by them and their families. Imagine the task of meeting a new patient, informing her or him of a cancer diagnosis, describing the treatment options available, and recommending a surgical plan that entails some of the most complex procedures possible, all the while establishing a strong patient-physician relationship. Dr. Kishan is an expert at this. And his patients are happy to expound upon his ability to quickly and calmly establish her trust. One patient wrote, you have a superstar in your radiation oncology department. Dr. Kishan is brilliant, knowledgeable, and skilled, and perhaps most importantly, compassionate. He is the best physician I have encountered in my life. He provided relief where there was no hope before. He is smart, principled, and caring, and he continues to check on how I'm doing. Dr. Kishan is also an exemplary teacher and an outstanding role model for students and residents. His commitment to the art of teaching is best described in the words of one of, of, one of his trainees who states, I can confidently say that Dr. Kishan is the best physician I have ever worked with, and there is nobody else I would trust more with the care of my loved ones. I feel best blessed to train alongside him and I'm happy that future UCLA medical students and residents have the similar fortune. Dr. Kishan, would you please come to the lectern and join me so I can present you with this award. You're very welcome. First, I'm going to read the certificate, then we're going to have a nice photo op. Um, the certificate reads, the 2021 Leonard Tao Humanism in Medicine Award David Geffen School of Medicine at UCLA, Amar Kishan, MD, for exemplary compassion, empathy, and respect for patients and excellence in the art of medicine. 
I'll put on my mask and we'll take a photo. Congratulations again, it's very, very well deserved uh, award. You're, you're a fantastic role model for, for all of us. Also in planning the white coat ceremony, we select a keynote speaker from a special group of our faculty whom have been recognized for excellence in teaching, patient care, research, and service to the community. None could be more deserving of that honor today than our speaker, Dr. Arlene Brown. Dr. Brown is a professor of medicine in the Division of General Internal Medicine and Health Services Research, and she serves as a Chief of General Internal Medicine and Health Services Research at all of you UCLA Medical Center. She also co-directs the UCLA Clinical and Translational Science Institute and its community engagement and research program. In this role, she works with teams of community and university partners to ensure that community and research priorities are aligned to promote research in community settings and to facilitate the exchange of knowledge and expertise between all stakeholders. She is a national leader in the area of health disparities research. Her career has been devoted to improving health outcomes, enhancing health care quality, and reducing disparities for adults with chronic conditions such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and stroke. Dr. Brown's work has focused on health care system, social, and individual level determinants of health for adults with those chronic conditions. Her current work includes work in safety net clinics to reduce cardiovascular risk in African American and Latino patients with AIDS, community engaged strategies coupled with behavioral economics to reduce racial and ethnic blood pressure disparities among patients who receive primary care in Los Angeles County, the second largest municipal health care system in the country and several statewide projects to, impact, to address the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic on low-income, minority, and underserved communities across California. She received her bachelor's degree in biology at, from Harvard University and her medical degree from the University of California, San Francisco, where she also completed internship, residency, and postdoctoral fellowship. She is a graduate of the UCLA Robert Wood Johnson Clinical Scholars Program and Specialty Training and Advanced Research, or STAR program. Dr. Brown has received numerous, too numerous to count, awards for her scholarly contributions, including the prestigious Herbert W. Nickens Award for Outstanding Achievements in Promoting Minority Health and the UCLA Chancellor's Award for Community Engagement. We're so delighted that she's taken the time out of her very busy schedule to be here today to share some of her thoughts and experiences with you on this very, very special day. Dr. Brown. Thank you very much, Dr. Braddock, for that very warm introduction. And I want to thank and uh, welcome Dean Dubinet to this new role. Um, thank you also, Dr. Prothro Stith. It was great to hear you talk about community, because that's going to be a big focus of what I want to talk about today. I'm also really grateful to the leadership and staff of DGSOM for inviting me to speak at this very important and inspiring event. I want to start with huge congratulations to each and every one of you. You are an immensely talented group, and I can't wait to get the chance to work with all of you. I also want to congratulate the many people around the room who helped you get here. A lot of them are sitting there beaming proudly behind their masks and so incredibly happy for you. And finally, I think it's really important to congratulate the communities that have nurtured and shaped you. Community is really important to me for a lot of reasons. It's how I got here. It's part of what I study, and it is, I believe, critical to the success of the mission of our medical school, health systems, and research institutes. As Dr. Braddock mentioned, I'm a general internist and health services researcher who studies community-engaged multi-sector solutions for promoting health equity. Central to this, for me, is taking care of patients. I take care of patients here in Westwood and also at all of you UCLA Medical Center in the San Fernando Valley. It's a public safety net hospital that's part of the LA County Department of Health Services. Decades ago, 
as new immigrants to this country. My family received health care in the same public health system in LA where I now see patients, teach, and do research. Whenever we needed care, I distinctly remember my mom taking time off from work, riding three buses to get to LA County USC Hospital, often with one or two sick kids with her, um, not aware, because her social network didn't know this, that we lived less than a mile from Children's Hospital and that we could have gotten care there. One thing that I will always remember, however, about those visits is that no matter how miserable those bus rides were, no matter how confusing it was to negotiate all the different colored lines in the clinic and the hospital, and no matter how anxious and exhausted we all were, it made such a difference. When someone listened carefully, showed some kindness, or offered a clear explanation of what was happening, it didn't matter who that was. Sometimes it was the nurse, less often it was the attending. Um, sometimes it was someone in environmental services. And very often it was a trainee, a resident, a medical student, a nursing student. They made all the difference. Later, when I got to medical school, I couldn't forget the important role that one person in the healthcare system can play for patients and families who are scared, overwhelmed, and stressed. It was also during medical school, however, when I became aware of the inherent inequities in our healthcare system, the entrenched disparities in preventable chronic conditions like diabetes, hypertension, heart disease, but also mental illness and so many others. These conditions devastate families and communities. I also became interested in understanding how experiences and conditions outside the walls of the hospitals and the clinics where we worked influenced every single aspect of health. Most importantly though, my patients, my peers, and my community and academic mentors nurtured this interest and challenged me to intervene on the community factors that contribute to the development and persistence of disparities in health and disease. Fast forward a few decades. I won't tell you how many. <laughs> Seemingly overnight, COVID-19 disrupted our lives in our communities. And it had a disproportionate impact, as you all are aware, on Black, Latino, Native American, Pacific Islander populations across the nation. But it wasn't really overnight. What we've seen in the past year and a half is really a combination of a fast pandemic, COVID-19, superimposed on the slow pandemics of chronic disease disparities, racial and social injustice, and other structural inequities that impact every single aspect of our daily lives. Housing, transportation, community, uh, employment, education, criminal justice. Now I'm gonna ask for a show of hands. How many of you um, have been to some of these places? Watts, and not just Watts Towers, on a field trip, okay? How many of you have actually lived there? Okay, Willowbrook? <laughs> More people on the stage. Yeah. East Hollywood, Boyle Heights, Compton, San Gabriel, Antelope Valley, Long Beach. Okay, good, LBC. Stockton, Merced. Okay. I ask about these areas because they have some of the highest rates of COVID infections and staggering death tolls. And for some time, some of the lowest rates of vaccination in the state and the county. The providers and staff in the public and private health systems across the county, including my colleagues here in Westwood, at MLK, at CDU, at all of you, and Harbor, they've been incredibly heroic in addressing COVID-19. But we've also seen heroism that often goes unheralded across the community. It's been simply amazing to me to watch this happen. There's a tutoring center that's become a clearinghouse for COVID information and PPE in South Los Angeles. One woman who works with developmentally delayed children purchased an ice cream truck to keep vaccine cold, mobilized a small army of volunteers and became a mobile vaccine center in the San Gabriel Valley. Community health workers from economic development and affordable housing programs helped residents with COVID symptoms access healthcare and therapeutics while assisting them with information on rental relief. So many programs, again, too numerous to count, 
delivered food boxes providing nutritious meals to the homes of those with COVID and all to everyone in the household, not just those who were sick. And faith leaders, so many of them from every possible denomination spent unbelievable amounts of time allaying concerns about the composition of the different vaccines, dispelling myths about things like microchips and Bill Gates and more recently the effectiveness of horse deworming treatments to make sure that their, their churches, their temples had, had, had right, the correct information. These trusted organizations understood their pivotal role in the health of the community. We in the health system and the research enterprise are just starting to realize the potential and the power of the community. Over the past year, our team, which includes staff, students, residents, fellows, and faculty from campuses across the state, has partnered with these and other trusted community organizations to listen to community concerns, provide accurate information on this fast-moving pandemic, increase the diversity of vaccine and therapeutic trials, and help to reduce hesitancy and improve access to vaccines. We've had over 300 town halls and community events, reaching 120,000 community members across the state. In LA County, in the Central Valley, through the state's Get Out the Vaccine campaign, we've worked to reduce individual and structural barriers to vaccine uptake. Canvassers, most of them young people from the community who live in the community and speak the same language, and these languages include Spanish, Tagalog, Korean, Gujarati, Armenian, Mixtec, Trike. They've gone door to door and participated in health fairs and so many community events. And they've reached 1.2 million households and registered almost 15,000 people for vaccines. These organizations, these individuals, have been incredibly generous with us in the academic world. They've helped us to understand the physical health, mental health, and social needs of the, of the communities. And this will allow us to do a much better job and be more effective um, in providing clinical and mental health care, in helping them access social services, and in asking the right research questions the questions that are truly most meaningful for the community. This is what inspires my commitment to primary care, to academic research, and to community partnered research and practice to reduce health disparities. I'm not the first person who's gonna tell you this, and nor will I be the last. You are starting medical school at an unprecedented moment. Unprecedented moment. It's a time of enormous strain on our healthcare system and our society but it's also a time of extraordinary opportunity to make ourselves and our systems better. I hope each and every one of you realize the difference that you can make in the lives of the, your patients, your colleagues, and your communities, whether you grew up there, whether you visited there, or whether you just saw it on a map somewhere. Um, and I also want to emphasize the importance of working both within these walls um, of academia and, and extending well beyond and outside the walls of academia. Thank you so much for your time. Those are fantastic remarks and I think just so much emphasizing the important role that all of you will have in delivering outstanding health care and thinking about ways that we can impact the health of communities. So thank you, Dr. Brown. So about the white coat. The white coat has played obviously a significant role in medicine as early as the 17th century, where physicians began wearing long white coats and sh surgeons wore short ones. A lot of people have asked, where, where did the white coat come from? And there really are three developments that led to the white coat. The acceptance of the germ theory, the advent of hospitals, and the growing importance of the scientific foundations of medicine. If you look at photos from the end of the 19th century, you'll see that surgeons and nurses were garbed in white coats. At the turn of the century, physicians, who began to be being viewed as scientists, began wearing long white coats, signifying the connection between the power of science and the protection of health. So the white coat symbolizes society's fundamental confidence in the knowledge and skills of physicians. The white coat also symbolizes the deep importance and sanctity of the doctor-patient relationship. 
a relationship in which perfect strangers confide their innermost fears, secrets, and concerns. The white coat connotes great privilege, but with that privilege comes greater responsibility. We must remember that the knowledge that provides us with the ability to cure must be accompanied by compassion, humanism, and caring. So now I'm delighted to call upon my colleague, Dr. Lee Miller, Associate Dean for Student Affairs, and Dr. Jason Napolitano, Associate Dean for Curricular Affairs. They will introduce each of our matriculating students and the institution for which they receive their most recent degree. The students will then be cloaked, that's where we put the white coat on, uh, by the Assistant Dean, leading the society to which they are assigned. As part of our advising program, that's designed, designed to guide students from matriculation to graduation. Our society names are Latin words that portray a sense of healing and community. And a hint, the first letter of each of the four names spells out UCLA. Okay, Dr. Miller, that's your cue. And my cue to sit down. All right, welcome everyone. Will Assistant Dean Ilji Fitzgerald, Associate Clinical Professor of Psychiatry and Biobehavioral Sciences, please come forward to cloak the students whom she will be advising in the Utila Society, which means useful or helpful. Efren Aguilar. California State University, Long Beach. Corinne Aulis, University of California, Los Angeles. Ashley Appleton, Howard University. Tori Averick, University of Colorado, Boulder. Anthony Azun, University of Arkansas. Mohit Bandla, University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Master of Science in Biomedical Science from the Charles R. Drew University of Medicine and Science. <laughs> Ursula Biba, Tufts University. Marilyn Bravo, Brown University. <laughs> St 
Stephanie Real Bueno, University of California, Los Angeles. Oliver Pettibone Campbell III, Dartmouth College. Da M. Celestin, Northeastern University. Shivani Dayal, Wesley College, Wellesley College, and Master of Public Health at Emory University. Andrew Dossman, University of Wisconsin, Madison. <laughs> Cheyenne Ibrahimian, University of Southern California and Master of Science in Global Medicine from Keck, the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California. Erica Escalera, University of California, Los Angeles. Irvin Garcia, University of Washington. <laughs> Asin. Lumushtekin, University of California, Los Angeles. Yashar Hafizka, Harvard University. Christopher Hernandez, University of California, Berkeley. Master of Public Health, University of California, Berkeley. Joe Huang, University of California, Los Angeles. Michaela Jules, University of California, San Diego. Haruka Kota Kota, Stanford University. Martin J. Chalwazi, Columbia University. <laughs> Sally Lee, Princeton University. Jeffrey Lee, 
University of California, Berkeley. Allison Malone, University of Minnesota, Twin Cities. <laughs> Chanel N. Indagire, McAllister College. Sang No, Stanford University. <laughs> Clara Do Tran Nguyen, University of California, Los Angeles. Jenny Hyun Nguyen, University of California, Berkeley. Darren Novier, University of California, Berkeley. Sonia S. Ruggeram, University of California, Berkeley. Martin Ramirez, University of California, Los Angeles. E. Hizeli Robertson, University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> Emilio Rodriguez, University of California, Los Angeles. Sarah Sakowitz, Columbia University. <laughs> Master of Public Health, Columbia University Mailman School of Public Health, and Master of Science in Medical Science from Boston University. Hanin Sheik, University of Utah. Othniel Noble Sparks, Rice University. <laughs> Ami Tumhaney, Johns Hopkins University. J. Von Koala, Brown University. Jackie Vu, Brown University. Candice Y. Wang, University of California, San Francisco. <laughs> 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 
Mia Williams, University of Wisconsin, Milwaukee. Chang Zhang, Duke University. Will Assistant Dean Chandra Smart, Professor of Dermatopathology, please come forward to cloak the students whom she will be advising in the Caritas Society, which means charity or affection. <laughs> Limi Ahmed, University of California, Berkeley. Jacob Alderite, University of California, Los Angeles. Lexi Anderson, University of San Francisco. Zachary Bongo, Oregon State University. <laughs> Nikki Bissaria, University of Southern California. Brandon Brisuela, San Diego State University. <laughs> Master of Science in Biotechnology from Johns Hopkins University. Dimitri Cadet, Columbia University. Matthew Carter, Stanford University. OCL Cicinas, Wichita State University. Nicole Charland, Fordham University. <laughs> Troy Coaston, Tulane University. Lisette Collins, University of California, Santa Barbara. <laughs> Jennifer Michelle Diaz, University of California, Berkeley. Fernando Manuel Aichegarai, Cornell University. <laughs> 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 
Pranith Goli, University of Louisville. Jennifer Gutierrez, Emory University. Denise Guzman Naranjo, University of California, Los Angeles. Ann Hall, Tufts University. Nicholas Hamilton, The Ohio State University. Maggie Hui, Boston University. Alonzo Iniguez, Pomona College, Master of Science in Physiologic Science, University of California, Los Angeles. Alberto G. Juarez, University of California, Los Angeles. Christy Kim, Yale University. Christine Lamb, University of California, Berkeley, and PhD in Cellular and Molecular Medicine from Johns Hopkins University. Trevor Lloyd, Brigham Young University. Sochi Longstaff, Stanford University. Yifan Mao, University of Chicago. Jacqueline Martin, Johns Hopkins University. Joanne Newins, University of California, Davis. Anthony Nguyen, University of California, Irvine. Tira Oskui, Tufts University. Derek Pan, University of Connecticut. Seat Lali Perez, Brown University. Jordan Pyre, Vassar College.
Mira Ramesh, Cornell University. Jorge Salcedo, University of Chicago. Hannah Arlene Sample, Azusa Pacific University. Saitiel Sandoval Gonzalez, University of California, Los Angeles. Desiree Cileo, University of Colorado, Denver. Joshua Simpson, University of California, San Diego. Kathleen P. Trin, University of California, San Diego. <laughs> Luigi Varilla, University of California, Los Angeles. Charlotte F. Wally, Dartmouth College. Michael Ward, University of Pittsburgh and Master of Science in Biomedical Science from the University of Pittsburgh. Right, I would like to call upon Assistant Dean Deborah Lehman, Professor of Pediatrics, to cloak the students whom she will be advising in the Levamentum Society, which means relief and comfort. Alexis I. Aliman, <laughs> California State University, Northridge. Jerome Andres, University of California, Berkeley. Jonathan Valderrama, University of California, Santa Cruz. Joseph A. Burrell, Columbia University. <laughs> Rebecca Brena, University of Arizona. Brett Cervantes, University of California, Irvine. Heidi Chen, Columbia University. Nam Yuang Cho, University of California, Los Angeles. J. 
Jade A. Cook, University of California, Los Angeles. George H. Dagulian, California Institute of Technology. Emily Joyce Dickey, Willamette University, Master of Education, Harvard Graduate School of Education. Yusuf Asana, University of California, Berkeley. Candice Fung, Claremont McKenna College. Santiago Godinho Rosales, University of Nevada, Las Vegas. Ethan Hahn, Brown University. Madison Hecht, University of Virginia. Yasmin Ibrahim, University of California, Berkeley. Denise Jimenez Tapia, University of California, Los Angeles. Rasida Kadka, Carleton College, PhD in Bio Biological and Biomedical Sciences, Harvard University. Janice Kim, University of California, Los Angeles. Caroline Lauer, Dartmouth College. <laughs> Melissa Lopez, University of California, Berkeley. Jessica Lutz, University of Colorado Boulder, Master of Public Health, University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> Michaela Mefford, University of California, Santa Barbara. Shami Mitchell, Spelman College. <laughs> Master of Science in Bioethics, Columbia University School of Professional Studies. Kevin Mui, University of California, Los Angeles.
Danielle Newton, Princeton University. Nan Nathan Nguyen, University of California, Davis. Esther Peluso, University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Justin J. Prescott, Miami University, Master of Science in Biomedical Science, Wake Forest University. Shannon Richardson, Stanford University and Master of Science in Epidemiology and Clinical Research from Stanford University. Aniel Rizzo, University of California, San Diego. Lauren Schaffrank, University of Pennsylvania. <laughs> Olivia C. Scott, Harvard University. Bennett M. Shaw, Emory University. Courtney Smith, University of South Florida, Master of Science in Chemistry, University of South Florida. Norman Spivak, University of California, Los Angeles. Abhinav Suri, University of Pennsylvania, Master of Public Health and Epidemiology, Columbia Mailman School of Public Health. Amulya Vadlan Kanda, Case Western Uni Reserve University. <laughs> Nafisa Wara, Harvard College. Brandon Williams, University of California, Los Angeles. Christian Wooten, University of California, Los Angeles. Hang Ho Jason Yang, University of California, Los Angeles. <laughs> Finally, I call upon Assistant Dean Holly Middlecoff, Professor of Medicine and Physiology, to come forward to cloak the students she will be advising in the Achendo Society, which means illuminate. Uh, 
Abina Adabo. Troy, <laughs> Troy University, Master of Science in Medical Microbiology and Immunology, Creighton University. Gerardo Artiega, Brown University. Jonathan Atella, Lipscomb University. Sydney Baker, University of California, Berkeley. <laughs> Alexandra Jose Borsier, Pennsylvania State University, Master of Science in Global Surgery, King's College, London. Raymel Brooks, Xavier University of Louisiana. CC Cascavita, University of California, Berkeley. Akshuya K. Chitti Babu, University of Connecticut and Master of Science in City Design and Social Science from the London School of Economics and a Master of Science in Comparative Social Policy from University of Oxford. Gina R. Conde, University of California, Los Angeles. Fadi Dahoud, University of California, Los Angeles. Aura M. Elias, Johns Hopkins University. Judy Figueroa, University of California, Davis. Michael Freddy, Seton Hall University. Sarah Frege, Stanford University. Jack Satoshi Fukushima, University of California, Berkeley. Darwin A. Gutierrez, Loyola University of Chicago. Master of Science in Medical Science from Loyola University, Chicago. Justin Hansen, Northwestern University. K. 
Kate Nietzsche Holland, The Ohio State University. Eliana L. Jolkowski, University of California, Santa Barbara. Michaela Koch, Stanford University. Sarah Larson, University of Chicago, Master of Science in Health and International Development, London School of Economics. Boss Lee, University of California, San Diego. Jennifer Lee, Northeastern University, Doctor of Pharmacy, Northeastern University. Alejandra Lopez Macha, San Francisco State University. Nina Modanlu, John Hopkins University, Master of Health Science in Biochemistry and Molecular Biology, Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. Antonio Moreno, Harvard University. Emma Moulton, Brigham Young University. Aisha Ng, Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Travis Tu Guien, Johns Hopkins University. Larissa Nicholas, University of California, Los Angeles. Diana Marie Radeljic, Amherst College. Matthew Rios, University of California, Los Angeles. Joshua J. Rivera, University of California, Berkeley. Emma Ruskin, Columbia University. Brian Sanchez, California State University, Northridge. Tara Charvini, University of California, Davis. Eric M. Smith, Stanford University. (laughs) 
Julia B. Sun, Massachusetts Institute of Technology and PhD in Bioengineering from Imperial College London. Daniel Tang, Stanford University, Master of Science in Computer Science, Stanford University. Anika Nuar Ula, University of California, San Diego, Master of Science in Media Arts and Technology from Massachusetts Institute of Technology. Amith Umesh, Johns Hopkins University. Eliza Villarruel, University of California, San Diego. Grace Yi, Yale University, Master of Science in Public Health, Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health. And Frank Feng Jo, Harvard University. Outstanding job, right? Okay, we had to do one thing. Will you guys all stand up for a moment? Don't they look amazing? Okay, you'll get a chance to stand up again, so please be seated. <laughs> I'm now going to introduce Dr. Jennifer Lucero, our Associate Dean for Admissions. I'm going to just interject something. Dr. Lucero, as the Dean for Admissions, is a critical member of our team. She's been here at uh, David Geffen School of Medicine for just over a year, has done a phenomenal job, and I'm really in, in her debt for bringing us these amazing students that are here today. Dr. Lucero, thank you for recruiting this amazing class. Would you please come to the podium and lead the class of 2025 in the recitation of the UCLA Medical Oath, Dr. Lucero. I am tearing up already. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes. All right. Thank you, Dr. Braddock. Will you all please stand? I would like the class of 2025 to join me in reciting the oath that is reproduced in the program. So, today, I begin my training to become a physician, a noble profession.
All right, a round of applause. I believe in you. We all believe in you. You are amazing. Please be seated. I will turn it back over to Dr. Braddock. So this concludes the formal part of the, of the festivities today. It's a, a very, very special day at, at so many levels. Uh, we'd like to invite all of you to join outside for celebration to honor the class of 2025. As we exit the building, I'll ask that the uh, family and friends remain seated, let the students exit, and then we'll have everyone exit. And we'll look forward to seeing you outside. Before we adjourn, again, thank you all for being here. This is a very, very special day for you, family, friends, and loved ones, for our students, for us in the faculty of the David Geffen School of Medicine. And uh, one last great big round of applause for the class of 2025. Photo op.
Thank you.